Hey everybody, it's Pastor James. I'm so glad you decided to join us for today's midweek message. It's going to be an awesome message. It's going to be a powerful message that I pray blesses your soul. So do me a favor right now. I want you to go ahead and like and share this post so that everybody on your friends list can hear the gospel of Jesus Christ. And so share it right now. And real quick, I want to let you know that, listen, we have church on Sunday morning at 11 a.m. So you want to be here. And I know a lot of people are saying that they're still scared to get out and stuff. Listen, we need to be in the house of God. There's no safer place that we could be than in the house of God. So please get here on Sunday morning at 11 a.m. here to Live in Rock Church. It's going to be a powerful time. So come, bring somebody with you, and let's worship the Lord together. But let's get into the message today. Turn your Bibles with me to Luke chapter 11. Luke chapter 11. We're going to start reading at verse 9. So Luke chapter 11, verse 9. This is the New King James Version. So let's read this together. It says, So I say to you, ask, and it will be given to you. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and it will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives, and he who seeks finds, and to him who knocks it will be opened. Let's read those verses again. It says, So I say to you, ask, and it will be given to you. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and it will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives, and he who seeks finds. And to him who knocks, it will be opened. If I could, just for a few moments, I want to preach on the subject. Now listen, I want you to get in the comment section and say, Amen, preach, pastor. I want you to encourage each other in the Lord. But listen, don't let me be the only one getting in the Word today. Let's get in it together. But if I could, just for a few moments, I want to preach on the subject. Ask, seek, knock. Ask, seek, knock. Come on, church, and let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, God, we're so thankful to be in your presence. God, we're thankful to be together in the glory of the Lord. God, we're thankful that we can come together to to study your Word and to just take in your Word, Father. So, Lord, God, I pray, God, open up our minds, open up our ears, and open up our hearts to not just hear the word, but receive the word. And God, I pray, anoint me, Lord God. Anoint me, Father. Anoint me in spite of me, Father. And God, I pray, Lord, that you would use me for your glory. Speak through me. Let your words go forth. And God, may Jesus be glorified. We love you. We thank you. We praise you. In Jesus' wonderful name, and everybody said, amen, amen. I don't know if you've ever experienced something like this, but have you ever had a time where, you know, you just felt like you were being ignored? Where you felt like somebody was just kind of putting you on the back burner or just blatantly not listening to you. You know what I'm talking about? Uh, there has been times where I was at work and I felt like I was just wasn't being listened to. I would ask for something and they would just ignore me. Or, you know, I, we've all been in that place where we felt like we were being ignored. Where we felt like they weren't listening to what we had to say. The, the way we felt, what we needed. And there's been times where we've all felt like that, whether it's been at work or or in a relationship or with friends or with family. It just felt like we are being ignored. And I think we've all felt that way sometimes. And uh, I think not only in our in our relationships or at work do we feel like we're ignored. I think sometimes we feel like we've been ignored when we pray. Have you ever been in that place where you have prayed and, and you prayed and you prayed, but it just seemed like your, your prayers just hit the ceiling and came right back down? You know what I'm talking about? Where it's like you pray and you felt like, oh man, I really prayed hard, but it just felt like it didn't get there or just it didn't hit the heavens and or maybe just God ain't listening or maybe God's just ignoring me. I think we've all been in that place when it comes to our relationship with God. I think we've all at one point it felt like, God, are you even listening to to me. God, are you listening to my prayers? Are you are you ever going to answer my prayer? I think we've all been in this place where we have felt ignored and it can feel like when we don't get our prayers answered and it can feel like when we we feel like we're not being listened to that God doesn't care about us. And this and this is a hard thing cuz I think we've all been in that place where we prayed and we feel like God, are you even listening? God, do you even care? God, I, I know you love me, but Right now, I just can't hear you. I can't feel you. God, you're not answering my prayer. And it just feels like maybe God doesn't care because we feel like if we don't get an answer, then he doesn't care. 
And maybe that works here on earth between people, but I'm telling you, we think that we know everything. Come on, somebody. Oh, that's not just, is that just me or is that everybody? But I think sometimes we feel like we know everything there is to know and that we know the best and we just know everything. And I think sometimes we project that on God and we say, God, you should have answered by now. God, I should have received something by now. God, I should have heard you by now. And we feel like this and we, we feel as if we know know better, but really God knows better. God knows when we need to be answered. God knows when we need to hear his voice. God, listen, God is a good, good father. He is not a God that neglects his children. He is a God that loves his children. Can I get an amen to that? God loves his children. He loves his people. In James chapter 1 verse 17, listen, this proves it. It says every good and perfect thing comes down from the Father of lights. That means that everything in your life that is good came from God. Everything that you enjoy in life came from God. Everything that you that is good and is perfect in your life, God gave it to you. Man, if that's not a reason to be thankful, if that's not a reason to praise and worship, I don't know what is. Everything that is good in our lives comes from God. God, everything that is perfect in our lives comes from the Father of lights. We have a good, good Father. And God loves to answer people's prayers. His eyes are on the righteous. His ears hear their cry. God listens to his children. But when we feel like we're not getting an answer, we feel like it's God's fault. And let's just take a second. Let's pause for the cause and sit here and think about this. Maybe it's not that God isn't answering. Maybe it's because we're not asking right. You hear me today? Maybe it's not because God's not listening. Maybe it's because we're not asking properly. Maybe we're not doing what we should be doing to receive the answer. Come on, we want to put all the blame on God. Let's be honest. It's probably our fault. Come on now. God loves to answer his children. God loves to answer prayer. He loves to see his children happy and supplied for and taken care of and provided for. God loves it, but sometimes I feel like maybe Maybe we're not asking right. What are you talking about, Pastor? Well, let's dive into it. Here in Luke chapter 11, verses 9 and 10, Jesus says, So I say to you, ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and it will be open to you. So he says you need to ask, you need to seek, and you need to knock. You need to ask, you need to seek, and you need to knock. So Jesus wasn't just saying three things out of the blue. Jesus said everything with intention. Every word that proceeded out of Jesus' mouth was with intention and dripped with the oil of the anointing of God. Everything that Jesus said. So these weren't just three things that he pulled out of the air. These weren't just three things he said. Jesus was telling us that there's three ways of asking God. There is three different ways we can entreat God with our petitions, with our needs, with our desires. There's three ways. So let's dive into those three ways. The first one, he says, he says we need to ask. We need to ask because he said if we ask, it will be given to you. So this means when we go to God in prayer, how many knows, first off, we need to be a praying people. We need to be seeking God with everything in us. We need to be a people who communicates to God, who talks to God. If you're not praying and you're not a person of prayer, don't expect God to give you the answers to prayer. Come on, somebody. Uh, God's not just going to read your mind and just give you whatever you need. We need to be people of prayer, people who communicate with God, not just about our needs and our wants and our desires, but we communicate to God because we love God, because we crave relationship, because we crave his presence. Oh my goodness, church, we need to be people of prayer. And so when we pray and we ask God, the first mode is we ask him. We ask him with our mouths. We say, God, uh, I need you to save my children. God, I need you to make a way for me to pay my bills this month. God, I need you to break this addiction. And there's and we ask God for these things. And there's sometimes when, when we just ask God for something and God answers it right away. 
There's times when we ask God for something and it's like the next, the, that very moment we receive an answer. That very moment he speaks to our soul. That very moment he gives us a miracle. And how many is thankful? Listen, that this is my favorite one. When we just ask and God does it. Oh my goodness, I'm so thankful for every time that God has done that in my life. Where I've asked him and he just right then, he just steps in and he makes a way. Right then he steps in and he does a miracle. There's times when we just ask. Ask him to do something and God does it right away. Why? Because he loves us. He loves his children and he wants to answer it. And so we just ask him in prayer. Because how many knows prayer is important. We ask him in prayer. And the Bible says as long as we're praying with his will. That God will answer it. As long as we're praying according to the heart of God. That we will receive an answer to prayer. That doesn't mean you ask God for a Lamborghini. That you're going to get a Lamborghini. Come on somebody. That doesn't mean that he said you ask God give us a mansion. That God's going to give you a mansion. He might. We never know. But I'm telling you when we pray to... When with the heart of God, with the intention of God, with the love of God, when we pray according to the will of God, we receive answers. And we can ask and God will do something straight away. And I'm thankful for every time God does a quick work. How many is thankful for a quick work? Come on, put amen in the chat right there. We ask him and God will answer as soon as we ask. And that is a great time. And we should always be super thankful for every time that God answers a prayer right away. So we got asking, but then he goes into a next step. He says, ask and it'll be given to you. He says, seek and you will find. So this is the next level of entreating God. This is the next level of asking God for a need or a want or a desire. This is the next level. So he says, ask, it will be given to you. But then it says, seek and what you will find. I, my mind goes back to when we used to play hide and seek as a kid. Come on, I used to love hide and seek. I love counting to ten, trying to find them. I love hiding. It was just, it was just an amazing time. I love hide and seek. But how many knows the object of the game is when you're the seeker, when you're the one who's looking for everybody, the object of the game is to find them. So what do you do? You're looking everywhere. You're looking behind every door. You're getting underneath the, the tables and the chairs. Come on, you're looking in the closets. You're doing everything you can to find those people. Why? Because you're trying to find. There's an object you're looking for. You need it. You're wanting to win. So you go and you try to find them and you'll do anything. You look everywhere. You even go into the nastiest of places. Come on. You look under the sink where it's all the, come on. You know what I'm talking about? We'll go into the nastiest of places just to find that which we are seeking for. Well, when, So we have asking God and God answers it. But then there's the seeking God. This is when we are looking for something. This is when God, you know, sometimes God is a father. Sometimes he will hide things for us. Notice I said that. Notice what I said. I said hide things for us, not hide things from us. Because sometimes there's people who hide things from us because they don't want you to have it. They don't want you to receive it. That's not God. That's not our good father. That is not Abba. Abba hides stuff so for us. He hides stuff for us so that we might find it. God loves to hide things so that when we do find it, he can see the joy on our faces. He can see the, the pleasure that it gives us. God hides stuff for us so that we can seek things out. Sometimes God wants you to get in your prayer closet and seek it out. Sometimes God wants you to get in your word. Oh my goodness, there's an object right there. There's a, a lesson right there. Maybe God wants you to get in your word and seek it out. Maybe if you're looking for guidance, get into that word. Get into your prayer closet and say, God, show me. I'm seeking this out. I am seeking until I find it. God, I'm seeking until I, I, I find that which I am looking for. We need to not only ask God and expect God to do it. Sometimes we stop at the asking and we don't go to the seeking. But I'm here to tell you, if you will, we need go stop from asking and we will go to seeking. God will take that which he has hidden. We'll be able to find it and we will be blessed by it. Somebody give me a glory to God in there. Amen. And so God says we should ask, but then there's the seeking. God wants us to seek it out. God wants us to search for it. God wants us to dig into him, dig into his presence, dig into his word. So that we might find the key or the answer to that which we are praying for.
And the Bible says that when we seek, it's not a, it's not a, a seeking with which we may or may not find it. That's not how it goes. The Bible says that if we seek it, then we will find it. So we ask and it will be given. Seek and it will be found. But then it goes into this third level. And this is knock and it will be open to you. Knock and it will be open to you. And, I, and what does this mean? Now, the other two kind of made sense, but this one's kind of out in left field, doesn't really quite make sense. Well, I'm about to break it down for you, okay? So we have asking, and then we have seeking, but then there's this thing called knocking. So he's saying, knock, and it'll be open to you. So what does that have to do with prayer? Jesus is talking about praying. Jesus is talking to his disciples about prayer. And so what does a door have to do with it? What does knocking have to do with it? Let me tell you right now. Have you ever went to a door and just knocked one time? Just went up to the door and went... No, nobody's ever done it. It feels unnatural to do it. I, I can't even recall a time where I went up to a door and just knocked on it one time. When I go up and I knock on a door, I sit there and I'll go. I knock it. I keep knocking. And then until someone answers the door, I just keep knocking. So what is he saying about this? He's saying that when you pray, keep knocking. Keep knocking. Keep knocking on the door. Oh, be persistent. Be persistent about it. If you got a need and or a desire and you're desperately seeking God about it, you just keep knocking on the door. Keep pushing into his presence. Oh, don't stop knocking until he opens the door. Oh my goodness, I get excited about this. I'm going to keep knocking on the door. I'm going to keep knocking on the door of God's heart saying, God, I need this. God, I need you to save my family. God, I need you to break my addiction. God, I need you to make a way where there seems to be no way. God, I need you to heal my body. I need you to heal my heart. God, I need you to move in my life. I'm not going to stop knocking until I get an answer. Oh my goodness, we need to be persistent in prayer. We need to get on that thing like a pit bull and grab a hold of it until we get, until we get an answer. Until we get which, that which we are seeking for. We need to keep knocking on the door saying, God answer the prayer. God answer my need. God answer my desire. Lord God, I need you to do it. We're going to keep knocking. We're going to keep knocking for revival in America. We're going to keep knocking until racism is ended. We're going to keep knocking until abortion is gone. We are going to knock until God answers somebody. Give God praise for that. Hallelujah. Amen. Whoo, hallelujah. I get excited about it. Oh my goodness. We knock until it, the door is answered. We need to knock until God gives us a word. Knock until God does a miracle. Knock until we see God at work. So sometimes we, we ask and God does it right away. Sometimes we have to seek until we find it. And then there's sometimes until you knock on that door until God answers. We be persistent. We go to God to prayer every day saying, God, I need you to do it. I'm telling you something there's powerful Powerful things that we can find out when we start asking, seeking, and knocking. And I encourage you today, don't stop at asking. Start to seek. If you're seeking, start to knock. And if you're knocking, just keep on knocking until God answers. Keep on knocking until God gives you a word. Don't just stop at asking. Don't just stop at seeking. Don't just stop at knocking. Don't feel like you're being ignored. God's just trying to get you because the asking and the seeking and the knocking is all just him saying, come to me. I want to have a relationship. I want more of I want more time with you. It's an opportunity and it's an invitation for us to have more of God, to be in God's presence more so we can ask, we can seek and we will not you're not being ignored. God just wants you to press into him. And when we do that, when we ask, when we seek and when we knock, we will see an answer to our prayer. We will hear a word from God, and God will bless our soul. So don't be discouraged about your unanswered prayer. Don't be discouraged and feel like God doesn't care. Don't be discouraged and feel like He doesn't love you. He loves you. He cares about you. He is a good, good Father, and He wants to bless you in Jesus' name. So right now, I just want every head bowed, every eye closed. If you're here and you're saying, Pastor James... 
I'm not saved right now. I don't know Jesus as my personal Savior. Or maybe you're listening to me and you're saying, Pastor James, I don't know Jesus as my personal Savior. But I, I, or maybe you're saying, Pastor James, I used to know Jesus. I used to serve him, but I've walked away from his presence. I've let go of his hand and I'm not serving him like I should. I'm not keeping his commandments in my heart and I am not saved. If you're here and you're saying, James, I want to give my life to Christ. or I want to give my life back to Christ. I want you to pray this prayer with me. Say, dear Lord, Come into my life. Make me yours from this day forward. I believe you died on a cross for my sin and you rose again for my victory. Lord, wash me clean in the blood of the Lamb. Let every sin be washed away. I repent of all sin and Lord, make me new. In Jesus' name. Amen, amen. If you prayed that prayer and you meant it to the bottom of your heart and you gave your life to Christ or you recommitted to Christ, I just let us know. Message us. Comment on the, on the comment section. Let us know that you gave your heart to the Lord because we want to get you rooted and grounded in the Lord Jesus Christ. But I want to give this altar call right here. Wherever you're at, if you're at home, you're, if you're working right now, I just want to ask you right now. Maybe you're here and you're saying, James, I... I feel like I'm praying and I'm praying, but I'm just feeling like I'm being ignored. I'm praying and I'm praying, but I don't feel like God's listening to me. I feel like I've prayed and God doesn't, God doesn't answer me and I'm just getting discouraged and upset. My heart is sick because my hope is deferred. God, I, I, I need God to do something different. I'm, I want to start asking. I want to start seeking. I want to start knocking. I want to change my prayer life and to change the way I pray so that I might see God move. If you're saying, James, I want to begin to ask. I want to begin to seek. I want to begin to knock. Right now, I want you to stretch your hand towards heaven, bow your head, close your eyes, whatever you want to do. But I'm going to pray for you right now that God does a miracle in your life. Come on church and let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, I pray for every person, God, who feels like maybe they've been ignored. I feel, I'm praying for every person who feels like, God, their prayers aren't being answered. I'm praying for every person, God, whose heart is sick because their hope is deferred. God, I pray for every single one of them, God. And Lord, I pray put a fire in their heart put a fire in their belly put a fire in their spirit God and I pray give them a fire for prayer Lord God I pray that they would go into their prayer closets and they would seek you out Lord I pray that they would go into their prayer closets and they would ask and they would seek and they would not God Lord I pray father that they would pursue you with everything in them that Lord God that they would run after you with reckless abandon and Lord God they would ask and seek and knock father and God I pray Lord that whatever they're asking God God, whatever it is, God, if it's a, it, God, I pray your will be done. I pray that it would be with your will. And God, I pray whatever they're asking, God, I pray do it in Jesus' name. Lord God, I pray if they're asking for their lost family members to be saved, God, save them. Lord God, if they're asking for their marriage to be healed, heal it, God. Lord, if they're asking for their body to be healed, Lord, let the healing stripes of Jesus touch their life, God. And Lord God, I pray if they need a way made, make a way where there seems to be no way. Lord, if they're asking for a broken addiction God break it in Jesus name Lord God I pray answer their prayer but God let us ask and let us seek and knock let us not give up let us not abandon our prayer father but Lord let us seek you even more violently and more recklessly God let us seek you with everything in us and God I pray that when you answer it God that we would come into a greater understanding of who you are and that God you would get every bit of the glory honor and praise Lord God every person healed may you get the glory Glory. Every person saved, delivered, set free, encouraged, uplifted. Lord God, you get the glory. Every miracle done, God, you get the glory. Because it's all about you, Jesus. And Lord, we love you, we thank you, and we praise you. In Jesus' wonderful name, and everybody said, Amen, Amen. Listen, I'm so glad that you decided to join us. I hope this word has blessed you. I hope it stirred up your heart for prayer. I hope you're going to be asking, seeking, and knocking until you get an, uh, a word from the Lord or an answer from God. Hope it's put a fire in your heart. But listen, I hope to see you Sunday. I want to see you. Please come be with us at 11 a.m. Oh my goodness, my heart misses you already. Oh, I miss you so much. I would love to see you here on Sunday. We're going to come ready to praise, worship, and glorify God. And I believe God's going to do something great on Sunday. So be here at 11 a.m. Doors open at 1045. And listen, we 
love you. Be blessed in Jesus' name.